Now that we've created a new document, let's look at some of the main tools that we use in Cork Express to create a layout. One of the first ones that we'll learn to tackle is the text tool. The text tool is the second one in our toolbox and it looks like a square with a T on it. So we'll click on that and if you don't see it, you can click and hold and you'll get your other little uh, linking and unlinking options, but the main one we're going to use is the text tool. The text tool does what it says. It allows you to put type and text onto your layout. Now if you're familiar with using programs like Microsoft Word, you'll know that you start typing at the top and just type out wherever you want and if you need to move down the page, you simply hit return or hit tab to move over. Well, in Cork Express, this gives you the freedom and the option to put your text anywhere that you want to and be able to change it up. But to do that, we need to create a text box and that's what the text tool will do for you. So to create a text box, once we have our tool selected, we'll simply click and drag and you'll see a uh, marching ants outline created. And when, when I release, <clears throat> it turns into a uh, blue bounded box and it's got a blinking cursor at the upper left hand corner. From here I can start typing out any text that I want, so I'm just going to type out this is some quick and easy dummy text. And you can type out text from there. And just like any other text selection, with our text tool selected I can click and I can highlight the text that I have and from here I can make changes to the text that I've created. I can also change up the size of my text box by clicking on any one of the little squares located at the corner or the edges of it. So I can click and drag up or if I click along the side and bring it in, watch what will happen to my text. You can see that it will wrap around and stay within the text box that I've created. And so that's how you can change the size of your text box. Additionally, if I move my cursor to the outer edges of my uh, text box, not on one of the squares, but just outside of it, you'll see the arrows turn into a rounded arrow. If I then click and drag, I can also change up the rotation of my text box. And all the text that's inside of it rotates as well. So that's one way you can quickly create and edit a text box. To change up some of the text that's inside of it, remember we have to highlight our text, so I'm going to highlight it. Then we're going to go down to our measurements palette, and I've got mine at the bottom of my screen. The measurements palette gives you all the information you need about the text and the text box that you have. So here we see the X and Y, this is the location of our text box in relation to the upper right hand, I'm sorry, the upper left hand corner of our box. So right now, my text box is at roughly 0.4 and 0.9 inches away from the upper left hand corner. You can see my width of the text box is about 3.5 and, and my height is a little over 2.5. You can even see the rotation and the number of columns that are in my text box. But for now, we're just going to mainly uh, um, pay attention to what's on the right hand side. First of all, these little options down here are your text alignment. Right now it's set to left alignment, but if I chose this one, I can select the center alignment. And now you'll see that my text is on the center of my text box. So if I was to click and drag and make my text box bigger, you can see the text will remain in the center of it. Additionally, I can choose the right alignment. And then my text you see is aligned to the right of my text box. And so that's one quick way of changing the uh, alignment or the justification of your text. Additionally, there's the left justified and center justified as well. If you want to change the font that you're using, right now I'm using the default, which is Helvetica. You can click in on the uh, text and you can see it pops out and gives you all the different fonts that we're using and kind of a WYSIWYG. You can see what the font looks like before you use it. So if I wanted to change it to say Bauhaus 93, you can see that my text then changes from there. Additionally, to change the size of your text, right now it's set to 12 point, which is your default, but if I click you can see I got other options, pre-assigned options, so let's choose 48. You can see now my text has gotten a lot bigger, 48 points. 
But if I wanted to type in a specific one that's not listed here, let's say I wanted it to be exactly 30 point. I hit 30, then I hit return, and now you can see my text has gotten a lot smaller. Additionally, as you see it got bigger, the text will wrap around and still stay within the text box that's been created. Some other options that are usually associated uh, down here are the bold, and this will be a faux bold if I click on it. And you'll notice that it gives a little triangle uh, warning sign. That means that you've applied a bold to your text, but it's not a true bold. It's not part of the font family. So you may not uh, be able to print it um, perfectly. But let's choose something that may have a bold. Looks like, um, uh, let's try, yeah, Arial. So if I chose Arial Regular, notice that the Arial font, when I clicked, if it has other fonts like Arial Italic or Arial Bold, um, you can quickly choose those and it will show you what they look like. And since Arial has a bold, when I choose the bold, it goes from this is Arial Normal, what it looks like. But if I click on bold, it becomes bold. Additionally, this is the uh, quick italicize, so if I click on the I, it will italicize my text. Let me move my text down. This is our um, move tool, so by clicking on it, it looks like the arrow. I can click and I can drag my text box down. Let me move it down so we can see the changes as they happen. Again, I have to choose my text tool to affect the text. And so if I choose bold again, it will unbold. If I choose italics, it will de-italicize them. The little F will give you some additional fun functions, such as you can underline your text. And so that'll add a quick underline. Or I can also, let's see, I can add, uh, create them as all caps. So everything that you see will be typed in uppercase, which comes in handy sometimes. Notice that a check mark appears beside anything that you've selected. So I've got underline selected, and all my text is underlined, and it's got a check mark, same way with all caps. If I chose small caps, you can see everything's typed in um, uppercase, but the lowercase letters are typed in smaller uppercase. So that's what small caps does. Same way with superscript and subscript, it'll change up various different things from there. So if I wanted to remove all these styles that I've put on there, all in one click I can do remove all styles, and my text turns back to the normal text that I typed in. So that's how you would choose uh, the text box from here. Uh, the next tool that we'll learn is probably how to manipulate a photograph from uh, the document that you've created.